Okay, this was, this is he, how he defined it. Now, what is the advantage of defining it this way? Well, the first advantage that he came up with is that we are dealing with And energies are always yeah. scalars. So we do not have to worry about number two, Lagrangian holds in all frames of reference. That means they hold for inertial frames as well as non-inertial frames. It doesn't matter. You can have an accelerating frame, you can have a non-accelerating frame and it will hold equally in both of them. The third advantage is changing coordinates in Lagrangian mechanics is relatively simple. Because we use a system which is called, this is important. Anyone from math physics, what kind of a system do we use? It's called the generalized coordinate system. So instead of saying X, Y, Z, or R theta phi, you instead call it Q to the subscript K and Q dot. Actually, let me just um, erase the K for now. So instead of saying X and X dot or R or R dot or theta, or theta dot, you just call it a generalized coordinate. You do the whole problem with your generalized coordinates and at the end you put the, question, the, the coordinates back in. So it makes your life easier. So you're not worried whether you're in spherical coordinates or whether you're in cylindrical coordinates or whether you're in Cartesian coordinates, it doesn't matter. You just use a generalized coordinate. And now how do you deal with three-dimensional space? You deal with it by saying, I'm going to put down this K. Once you put down this K, what you're saying is that K goes from one to three. So QK actually means X, Y, and Z. Get it? Where Q, where K goes from one to three or four, or five, or n, or whatever other number you have. Official definition of a generalized coordinate system, write this down, is the certain minimum number of coordinate that are required to specify the configuration of a given system. So usually you call them Q1, Q2, Q3, and so on up till Qn if your system requires n coordinate systems or n configurations. Okay, the number fourth reason why this is important. Oh. And I did tell you, right? It's <clears throat> so if Q, if Qs are Xs, for example, X, Y, Z, if our QI is X, Y, Z, then what is Q dot I? It's the first derivative with respect to time. What will it be? Exactly. So it'll be V X, V Y, V Z, or X dot, Y dot, Z dot. So start getting familiar with this terminology. So instead of using Vs, now we're gonna start using these dots. The 
fourth advantage of using Lagrangian mechanics in Lagrangian mechanics dealing with constraints becomes relatively simple. Now let's start talking about 